Hi! So far we're able to launch our ball, see it bounce around in our world, and we're able to, to detect when it enters the hole. But we're not yet able to configure where the obstacles are or move around our hole, it's all just hard coded in. So in this video we're going to be creating a format so that we can store level information. So when we're storing level information, we want to store it in a format that we can export our Scala objects to and read back into a Scala object. And we're going to be using uPickle for that. So uPickle, it's pronounced MicroPickle. It, it's a library that lets us take Scala objects and convert them into JSON and then get JSON and turn it back into a Scala object. So I'm going to add this library as a dependency first. So I can go over and switch over to IntelliJ. I'm going to go in my build. I'm going to add this as a library dependency. One thing I have to do before I reload my project here is make sure that we're using version 064 of Scala.js because that's the version we need here. Now we'll reload this. We need to also reboot our SPT here, and then we'll have uPickle ready to go. And that's going to recompile with the new library dependencies. And so now we have it all loaded up. What we're going to do is we're going to create a bunch of classes that let us store data about how a level is going to be. And then we can just take those types, convert them into JSON, and convert JSON back into those types really easily with uPickle. So first, I'm going to create a new class. Um, I need to create a new. I need to add my Scala SDK here. Okay, so I'm going to create a new Scala class. I'm going to call it Level. And with uPickle, you need to have a case class so that it can automatically figure out how to convert it into JSON and read into this type. And what is level going to have? Level is going to have a ball, a hole, and a bunch of obstacles. So before we add those to level, let's first create the types of how to store these balls and, op uh, and obstacles. So what, what we have to do is create a type that's contains the data necessary to create a sprite, but won't be identical to a sprite. Because when you have a sprite, for example, a physics circle will hold on to the world, but we don't want to put that in our JSON when we convert a sprite info to JSON. So we're really going to have only this data, for example, for a physics circle. So I'm going to create a sealed trait, sprite info, which represents the information needed to create a sprite. And we're going to have a method here. We're going to have create a sprite, which is going to return us a sprite. And it's going to take a world. So in case you do need a physics JS world, it'll use that to create the sprite. And it'll be the job of the different sprite infos to implement how to do that. So let's start creating them. The first one is going to be our first type of sprite, which is a circle. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to create a case class. Here we also have to do case class because you pickle requires all of your types to be case classes here. So you're going to have a case class and I'm going to call it circle sprite info. The parameters we're going to take, we're just going to copy from circle. So we can copy this part. I'm going to take all of these and this is going to extend sprite info. We're going to create the create sprite method, which is going to take a world. And here we're just going to create a new circle with those parameters, location, radius, and color. And we don't need a val radius here. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So now we've created our circle sprite. Now let's create our physics circle sprite. So we'll create physics circle sprite. It's going to take the same parameters, but when we create our circle, we're going to create a physics circle. Circle, and here we're going to pass the world that's given to us as a parameter. So now we've created a circle sprite info and a physics circle sprite info. Now we can copy this and do for line and box. So first we'll do line. So we're gonna have line sprite info, physics line sprite info. We can copy the parameters from sprite. So we can go to line. We have a start, end, and color. So we can copy that. So here we're taking a start, end, and color. And, okay, wrong one. So here first, start, end, and color. And here we're gonna create a new line with our start, end, and color. So this is basically the reason we're creating all these case classes is so that we can store the data necessary to create a sprite once the game is loaded. So this, these parameters for case classes is what will be stored in our JSON. And here we're gonna do a start, and color our world, and here is media physics line. Now, lastly, we're gonna have a box, so box sprite info and a physics box sprite info. Our box takes a location width and height and color, so we're gonna store that. So, paste those things in here. And here we're going to create a box with our location, width, and height. Here we're going to create a physics box with our location, width, and height. So now we've created all the types to store information about what a sprite will be like when it's created. Now we can go ahead and create our level. So level is going to have a ball, hole, and a bunch of obstacles. So first we're going to have ball of type and this is going to be a physics circle sprite info. We're gonna have a hole, and we can remember here that this one is not part of our physics engine, so it's just gonna be a circle sprite info. And lastly, we have our obstacles, which is gonna be a sequence of, and here we're just gonna take sprite info. So whatever you want. And one of the really cool things you pickle can do is here, it'll be okay with having a sequence of sprite info, and when it generates the JSON, it'll store with the JSON for each sprite info what type of sprite info it is, because we've created a sealed trait here. So now we've created the types. Now we need to be able to read and write the JSON based on levels. So I'm going to create an object, and this is going to be level storage. So this is going to handle getting and saving a level. So first we can have a read level, which is going to take JSON of type string. And here now we need to start using upickle. So we're, I'm going to import upickle.default.underscore. So this imports all of the implicits and methods I'll need to read and write JSON. Now to read, I just do read and I give it what type I'm reading into. So I'm reading a level from my JSON. And now we can have a write level, which is going to take a level. And here, since it already knows what type you're gonna be passing to it, you don't have to give a type parameter, you just give write the level. And this will give us a string, and this will give us a level. So now we've created the ability to read and write a level. Now let's go ahead and use it. So for, for a quick test, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a level here. I'm going to create a level. And this is going to represent the level that we're, we already are trying to load here, the basic level. In the future, you can store a series of levels in a JSON file, load that, at, or you could even have a server where you can just store a database of all the levels 
and in the future you might even have the ability for players to create their own levels and save them. But for now we're just going to do a quick test, we're going to create a new level. I'm first going to give it a, my ball setup, so physics circle sprite info. My starting position is going to be 400, 400. My, and this is going to be level 2 pickle. So this is not the level I want to use because I want to test the ability to generate JSON and parse the JSON. So point, the second one is going to be my radius. My radius is going to be whatever radius I'm putting here. Here I'm putting 20 and it's going to be a lime ball. Now the second one is our hole. So this is just going to be a circle sprite info. Our starting point is going to be here. We can actually just copy all these parameters because that's what we want for our hole. So now we've created our circle sprite. Uh, sprite info for hole and now lastly we want to create all of our obstacles now in this case we only have one obstacle which are our walls and we're creating a box here so I can copy all of these parameters and I can create a physics box here with all of those points so now we've created a level now to test out the ability to generate JSON and parse back JSON first I'm going to generate val JSON is going to be, and now here I can use level storage. I can write a level. So this will give me a string. I can print my JSON. Ooh, something. So we've run into a linker issue here. So let's take a look at our build and make sure we're doing this. Okay, so what we did here was we just did person percent to depend on a Scala.js library. When you're depending on a Scala.js library, you need to make sure to use person person person. And if we go back to Chrome here, we can see here that that's what we were supposed to do. Okay, so I just missed out on that. Now if we reload, I can exit SBT and go back to doing my tilde fast up JS, and now we should all be fine. I can go over. Back, it's going to compile again. Kind of fast optimize. Okay, so it worked. Now I can go ahead and go to Hello Collidium here. I can go to the console, and if we reload, we can see that we have our JSON generated here. So it looks really clean. We see ball, it gives us the type of sprite that we're dealing with here location, radius, color. We have our hole, which is just a plain circle sprite, and we also have our obstacles, which is a box. Now let's parse it back and use it to actually load up this board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first print the linear JSON, and then I'm going to create a val level is going to be level storage dot read level our JSON. So first we had our level, level to pickle, and now we're getting back a level. And here, wherever I'm creating manually a sprite or point now, I can use data from the level. So for example, here I can use level dot ball dot location should be my sling start position. For the hole, instead of creating a circle, what I can do is I can take my level, grab the hole and create a sprite with my world. For my ball, I can do the same thing. I can do level dot ball dot create sprite with my world. And for all of my sprites, which is my obstacles here, I just do level dot ball dot, not level ball, obstacles. And for each obstacle, I want to create it. So I'm gonna take my sprite info and create a sprite with my world. And here I don't care about what type it is because I know that any sprite info will have a way to create a sprite given a world. So here I don't care, but I just delegate to whichever info it actually is will handle the creation of the sprite. And we should be able to reload and play our board. So now this is all getting loaded from the level and I can play my game. And I can win it too. So now we're able to load up a level from JSON and export a level to JSON. 
In the next video, we'll look at a few more fun things with adding some sounds to our game. I'll see you then.